I see. Well, this is most unexpected. Oh! You... You beat me to it, didn't you? <laughs> oh! He's mad! Super Saiyan, no! Oh. <sighs> he be looking fine, though. Oh. Not bad. Oh. But this is going to cost you. No, no I don't have it. Hand the gnosis over now. Don't make it, me take it from you. I don't have it. We didn't take it. Yeah. Oh, his cape is so awesome, though. Look at that shiny. <laughs> Die. No, no, no. No. <gasps> what is this? Huh? Out of the way. Oh, he juked me. No, 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 no! Uh. Run! Oh! Scratch that! Yeah! I did it! Yay, I did it! <sighs> it seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. The what? Legacy transformation? And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you. We didn't take it. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend. Even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. I like him. <laughs> I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... The corpse was fake? Yes, it appears so. Mm. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Uh-oh, what is that? Backup plan? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. Osile. Overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated nope. by Morax, the GR Archon, in the Archon War, and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the GR Archon's stone spears ever since. Nope. If such an ancient god would be unleashed upon Liu Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? I worry. What is this? What? Me don't like it. No. Definitely don't like that. <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Nia, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. You meanie? Huh? He's 
He's already gone! That guy is fast! Uh, what's going on? There it is! The floating palace! It looks like a palace anyways. Uh, uh, what? I love the music. <sighs> Paimon's exhausted. Wow, it's so pretty. <laughs> if we hadn't happened to see the gate chamber flying over just as we came out of the golden house, we really wouldn't have known which way to go. What <gasps> are you doing here? Show! Huh? Hold on. It's the Adept guy. What are you doing on the Jade Chamber? Paimon thought you were arguing with the Chi-Sing. Is the fighting over? No. Faced with a calamity of such magnitude, we have agreed to put our differences aside for now and unite against this common enemy. <laughs> Don't be petty. Oh, Paimon gets it. So how do you plan to defend Leela? Eh. Just seeing this overlord of the vortex guy puts a pit in Paimon's tummy, even from all the way out here. It's not just you. We've got new Millilith recruits who can't even stand at attention without shaking. The force of an ancient god's presence seems to be too much for ordinary people to handle. Have you looked at the thing? <laughs> Which is why we must stop that monster before it gets any closer to Liyue Harbor. <sighs> Uh, what's that for? So will the power of the Chi-Sing, Millilith, and Adepti gathered here be enough to stop that god? Said the old lady. We've already discussed this together, and our conclusion is... not necessarily. Uh. What? What? All of you are supposed to be the guardians of Lilith! Can't you think of something? One certainly could. Huh? Are you talking about us or you? The Chi Sing did once research the matter of the Guizhong Ballista when it piqued their fancy. Oh. And as fate would have it, one who did craft the Guizhong Ballista with one's own hands is here. Who? For what could you mortals ever learn of Adepti mechanisms? Yet it would take one but a little tinkering to turn this Ballista into an engine of war beyond your wildest thoughts. I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to man it. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Let's go. Yep. This is so pretty. Yep. All right. They're so pretty. Oh, go away! <gasps> the Fatui! They're attacking the Guizhong Ballista! <laughs> On to battle we go! Oh, that's it! Oh, now you show up! The interlopers are no more. Now we may commit ourselves fully. <laughs> what? This is so cool. I don't think we can. 
No, don't freeze on me. What is this? Uh oh. That's not good. Yes, <laughs> Thank Be you. Be careful now. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. No! What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. That's sad. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. Uh -huh. The effects of the sigil of permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the overlord of the vortex can make any waves again. Ah, oh, so it's not done. Mm, okay. We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyue Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. But your Jade Chamber... Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then-limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liu Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liu means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Yeah, listen, listen to Madam Ping. Well, I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Businesswoman through and through. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh? Uh-oh. 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Very true. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? No. Hmm. I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, 
Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. In the dream, I yearn to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as trade. Mm. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang. We're all on the same side here. Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? When there is discord between the Guardians and those they were meant to defend, harmony becomes very difficult to restore. Right! The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both and that nothing good would come of it. This is what we learned in the City of Freedom. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity. As Adepti, we've become a laughingstock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. <laughs> all right, all right. Didn't Ning Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last, but thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Yay. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. Listen to the man. <laughs> You see, this is what Liu is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection, but it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contracts between gods and Liu has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liu and its people. Well said. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liu Harbor. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. And they're trying to understand things from their perspective. Let us return now. Dude. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the conqueror of demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall, and return whence we came. Hmm. They're so pretty. Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. <laughs> All right, Mooncarver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All's well that ends well, huh? 
didn't to say that again. Oh, right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the Overlord of the Vortex on our own. So Rex Lapis never showed up. Mm -hmm. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death, too? Mm-hmm. You call this cooperation between Harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. <sighs> Great cheese and Louie. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, man, is she pretty. <laughs> oh. It seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child. And you, you're also one of the Harbingers? Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit awkward, wouldn't you say? Oh, come on, stop being that way. <laughs> Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> little tussle at the end. Boy, you get angry. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhongli. Curse them for leading me on. Senora and Zhang Li? So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. I'm sorry, agreement. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> Out with it, dude. The contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. Dude. <sighs> How sanctimonious. Not gonna lie, I did have my suspicions. What? So you're the Lord of Chiu? No, wait. That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? Yeah, why? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract. For it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? What? Wait, what? Why? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. I witnessed the founding of Liyue together with the Adepti 3,700 years ago. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? No. Oh. oh, Zhang Li. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. 
So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liu Achising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liu. So... Were you satisfied with the finale? Indeed I was. The Gnosis, which I had kept for so many years, suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. That's right. Which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? So it was a test. Of course. And it would have been all too easy for him, too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liu matured when faced with the death of its deity. I was pleasantly surprised with the finale of the show that you all put on. Why, you even deserved an encore. These things were all a part of my script. The only unforeseen plot twist was the conduct of the Liu Achising. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti to come to the defense of Liu. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liu. Usually that's how that goes. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! Ha! <laughs> On the contrary. I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! Oh, shut up. <laughs> you don't deserve that. <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liu, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? We were both equally fooled. Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? I see. <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapoljarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ooh, I don't like her. <laughs> ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. He really doesn't like her. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Zhongli always told us a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Right. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. What? Huh? So you just gave it willy-nilly? Just because you wanted to test the city? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. <sighs> okay. 